The next several videos, I'm going to show you a process that is totally unnecessary. However, it will allow you to crank out some partial fractions problems very quickly. And especially in calculus, I think this has been a route that most people have preferred to use uh, to, to do some of these problems. Uh, it's called the Heaviside Method. Uh, it is named after a mathematician, I believe his name was Oliver Heaviside, which is a weird name, but that's what his name was. Um, and he observed kind of a quick way to be able to find, uh, break up uh, rational expressions into partial fractions. Um, he, he calls it the, the cover-up method, although a lot of books just call it the heavy side method. Um, I'm also going to give you a handout that kind of goes into this a little bit more in depth, but I, I want to show you a couple of examples. I want to try to give you some kind of idea about why it worked, okay? So here's the concept. Um, so you factor your denominator, it breaks up into parts. By the way, this is an example I already did, so I just want to show you, you get the same result. Um, so heavy side would have said, okay, uh, we're going to write this as a over x plus 5 uh, plus b over x minus 1, okay? And if you remember, one of the options we could use here is to multiply the numerators by the common denominator. And so the common denominator here is going to be uh, x plus 5 times x minus 1. And what's going to happen is that's going to knock out that denominator. Uh, if we multiply by x plus 5 times x minus 1 here, it's going to knock out the x plus 5 denominator. Uh, if we multiply this by x plus 5 times x minus 1, uh, we're going to knock out the x minus 1. And what we're left with is this. We're left with 7x plus 17 is equal to a times x minus 1 uh, plus b times x plus 5. Okay, here's what heavy, heavy side realized. Heavy side realized that if these expressions are going to work, then this expression needs to be equal to this expression for any value of x. Any value of x, okay? And what heavy side realized is he could strategically pick his values of x to knock out variables he didn't want to deal with and make his life easier, okay? So the idea here is if I put one in over here, I should get the same thing as if I put in one over here. If I put in two for x over here, I should get the same thing if I put in two for x over here, and so on and so forth. And so what Heaviside said was, well, okay, why don't I put in a negative five for x? And if I put in a negative 5 for x here, this is going to be 0b, and it's going to leave me an equation that just has a, and then I'm going to be able to solve for it really quickly. So that knocks out the b. We put in a negative 5 here. We put in a negative 5 here, okay? And what you're going to get, uh, you're going to get negative 35 plus 17, uh, which it's not really math I want to do right now. Let's see, negative 35 plus 17, negative 35 plus 20, is negative 15, and it would be negative 18, I think. Okay, so negative 18 would be equal to, uh, here we're gonna get negative 6a, okay? And you can see here, negative six times a needs to be uh, 18, uh, a is gonna equal three, okay? Now, that only gives me a, but then heavy side says, well, okay, this has to work for any value of x, right? So let's be strategic here, let's, this back to what it was. And now I want to solve for b, so let's get rid of a in the equation, okay? If I fill in 1 for x there, uh, this is going to be a times 0, and this is going to go away, okay? Uh, I can fill in 1 for x there, and it should be equal to what I get when I fill in 1 for x over here. So that's going to be 7 plus 17 is 24, okay? That's 0, a. That's going to be 6b. Okay, so we get 6b is equal to 24, uh, b is going to be equal to 4, okay? And so my partial fraction decomposition would be 3 over x plus 5 plus 4 over x minus 1, and we're done, okay? That's actually not Heaviside's cover-up method. It's just making the point that you can put in whatever value you want for x, and if you do it strategically, you can knock out a variable and you can just make your life a lot easier. So Heaviside realized something. Remember that when you filled in zero, it knocked out one of these variables, and it left another variable, okay? And so Heaviside realized, uh, and we can kind of go back up here and, and we can see this, okay? Um, I actually kind of left this original setup. So remember, if I wanted to cancel B, 
I would substitute in a negative 5 here, okay, and this whole term would go away, okay? And what it would leave me with would be uh, basically an expression over here. Like if I had not simplified this, uh, if I put negative 5 in here, right now negative 5, if I didn't cancel this, would make that, uh, would make that fraction undefined because we'd have a 0 in the denominator, okay? Um, and meanwhile, when I substituted in negative 1 here to try to cancel the a term, um, the negative 1 substitute, I'm sorry, a positive 1 in place of x here, the positive 1 would make those two terms 0. We'd be dividing by 0 again, and that would lead to another problem, okay? So here's what Heaviside realized. So I'm going to go back to my original, my original setup here because uh, it would be hard to see otherwise. So Heaviside realized if you go through this whole process, Heaviside realized if I'm trying to find A's denominator, I really could just substitute in the value that would make A's denominator 0. Okay, because remember, we had a b times x minus 5 over here when we multiplied the whole thing out. So it's actually going to knock out the b variable. So you can make this value negative 5, okay? Or actually find the value that would make that denominator undefined, okay? If you come over here, you can't have a negative 5 here because it will force it to not work. What Heaviside realized is, if you think back through the equation that I had from earlier, you can kind of see how this works. Figure out what makes your denominator equal to zero, okay? You have to cover up, this is why it's called the cover-up method, cover up the term that would be zero in the denominator. And if you substitute the value that would make that denominator zero in for x, and you evaluate the expression that's left with the part that would be zero covered up, you're going to get the value of a. So that would be negative 35 plus 17, which is 18. Notice that's a negative 6. 18 divided by negative 6 sorry, negative 18 divided by negative 6 gives me my a value of 3, okay? And then you can do the same thing with the other fraction. You can go over here and you can say, okay, what would make this denominator 0? Uh, positive 1 would make that denominator 0, okay? And you can come back to this side of the equation. You can't put a 1 in here because if you put a 1 in here, it'll be 0. So you cover that up. And you substitute in 1 here, and you substitute 1 in here. And notice what happens. You get 7 plus 17, which is 24. And you get 1 plus 5, which is 6. 24 over 6 is equal to 4, and that's your missing value. Okay? And this is what's called the heavy side cover-up method. Okay? You take the value that would make your denominator equal to 0. You cover up that 0 value, and you substitute the value that would make your denominator 0 in for both of the remaining parts, it should give you your constant. And by the way, this is really, really nice. For example, A and B could be uh, fractions. They weren't in this example. Uh, but this is really, really nice when you have fractional answers, OK? Uh, so you certainly don't have to use this uh, if you want to do kind of the in-between version and you just want to write out the equation like we discussed in earlier videos and sub in a value of x that would make a term 0 and make it cancel out. You can also shorten the process down and not do the full cover-up method, but just kind of a variation on that. Uh, but the cover-up method can be very nice, OK? So I will put up a couple more videos showing you this. And, and uh, again, don't have to use it, but it will save you a little bit of time if you understand how it works.